the Art Center. How you doing? So up here, and I'll just tell you how many people are watching. So we'll wait till we get a couple in. Couple okay, in. so the guy who wants yeah, to start. Yeah, we'll just wait a little bit. Is, is the uh, vocal on yet? Yeah, so the sound oh. is on. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to wait for just a little bit, people. There we go. We got one. Hello. Who is it? Who is it? <laughs> no. <laughs> Kayla's watching. Kayla Obert. <laughs> How are you? Hi, ya? Kayla. <laughs> Kayla, can you hear us? So we'll give it a few more minutes, let people join in. All right, everybody, how you doing? I'm Vicki Sandercock. Most of my students, though, know me as Miss Vicki. Um, I'm a teacher at the Quincy Art Center, and we're live today to bring you a project that we've been doing in uh, our studio downstairs when we have kids from various schools come and visit. They look at our tour give them a nice museum tour and they come down and do a awesome art project with us. Now unfortunately not everybody was able to do that this time around because we had to shelter in place. Um, many did but some did not. So we wanted to make sure that everybody got to see the project, do the project if they like to. Um, uh, we are, do we do this through a grant. Um, we, call our, we call ourselves Smart Kids and basically what we do is we go into the schools twice a year we give the kids a simple art history lesson and then a nice uh, hands-on lesson as well. We do that twice a year. Then they come to us once a year. They get the museum treatment and another hands-on in our own studio. So we're going to kind of kick it off today with the one that they haven't quite, we didn't have, not everybody quite got to do. And what the medium is, is actually construction paper crayons. All right, so construction paper crayons. I had never heard of them before, so I don't know if they're maybe something kind of new. Um, again, I never heard of them before, so I was kind of excited about the, about this project because I always like to try new things. And we thought since we're using construction paper, we would test these out with the ultimate test by using black construction paper. Now, you don't have to use black construction paper. You can use whatever paper you have. All right, if you have construction paper, you can choose your color even, okay? Because this is also about color. We're using color crayons, construction paper crayons, so color is going to be a big part of the project as well. Okay, so construction paper crayons. How are they different than crayons? Well, they look pretty similar. They look pretty similar, okay? But they do work a little bit differently. I find that they are kind of a cross between a, a crayon and a colored pencil. They're very smooth. They have a really nice texture to them. Okay, so this pro this project is also geared mainly towards kindergarten through third grade. All right, so I'm going to basically teach it like I'm teaching to kindergarten through third graders. All right, now does that mean an adult can't join in? Of course they can. I am inspired by children every day. Children's artwork. I steal it from them all the time. So if you want to do go along and do this with us as well. Feel free to do it. It should be kind of fun, something a little different. Now, if you don't have construction paper crayons, which I'm guessing you probably don't, you can use crayons, just regular crayons. You can have pastels of any kind, whether they're oil or chalk pastels, go for it. Those things look beautiful on dark paper. You can also use white paper if you want. If you just have some uh, paper that you use from your printer, just grab some out of your printer and join along with us, okay? All right, so. We're going to start by basically going over what our main object of the, the lesson is. And that is, okay, along with color, we, we're going to teach kind of the landscape process with kids. All right, so this is kind of tricky, especially for the really young ones. All right, so it's kind of fun to teach. All right, so I'm going to start by showing them that sometimes people think crayons are only for little kids. Now, crayons have been around well over 100 years, 
And when they were new, a lot of artists of the time kind of tried them out because they were a new media. Um, Paul Clay, one of my favorite artists, one of my favorite abstract artists, used a lot of crayon. And a lot of his artwork actually does look like it's inspired by children. It's very free. It's very spontaneous. Kids' artwork is very free and spontaneous. That's why I love to work with them. Um, so feel free to, to join along with me. So landscape. What is a landscape? Well, this artist is actually a crayon artist, and he does different kinds of art, but I'm going to show. start out with a landscape that he did. This is a crayon, piece of crayon art, okay? And the name of the artist is, i got to look, sorry, Jeffrey Robert. Jeffrey Robert. It looks all very realistic. All the kids are always like, oh, my gosh, how do you do that? I'm always like, well, practice, practice, practice right? If you want to be really good at something, you have to practice. But you can also be really free and easy with these. That's what my, but basically my project is going to be something a little bit more easy and spontaneous with the little ones. And we're going to play with color. So this one, this is our landscape. We're going to start with the landscape. What is interesting about a landscape? Well, for the smaller ones, we talk about foreground and background. The background, obviously, is everything behind. Everything behind. Things get smaller as you move back in space. Actually, there's a little island right here, and it has palm trees on it as well. This palm tree is actually, obviously, more in the foreground. Everything that is in the front is larger, okay? Now, the background is just as important as the foreground, obviously. In this case, you can see that you have this beautiful, beautiful sky with clouds, the beautiful water, the, even the shadow of the uh, palm tree and down here at the bottom you've got even a little sliver of land there so if this was just a palm tree right on a piece of white paper or white canvas it might be kind of boring the background coming together with the foreground makes it much more interesting background oftentimes makes you want to really look at something a little bit more closely there's little palm trees on this island as well okay so background foreground all right, color, color as well. Now I talk a little bit more about color with my next picture. Okay, now this is by the same artist. And notice in his frame, I love his frame because he actually has a crayon in, added into the frame. Now I'm trying to get this a good, a good shot for you here. All right, because everything's backward as I look in here. So it's kind of a challenge for me. I'm kind of spacey anyway. But anyway, so we've got beautiful color. This is also a crayon drawing, this tortoise. The background, what is important about the background here? Well, it tells us where the tortoise is. A tortoise can be on the land, a tortoise can be on, in the water. In this case, he is in the water. All the beautiful textures in the background of the play of light on the water here is gorgeous. You have some beautiful color up in the background. And now we say, what is going on here with the kids? Why? Is water pink? Is water really pink? And they're like, no, no, that's the light playing from the sunset. Exactly. So again, everything is not just one color. So if you're going to do blue water, add some other colors to it. Make it interesting. The turtle is not totally green. There I see some blues and some yellows. In the water as well, I see some nice turquoises and greens. So all those different colors together make it much more interesting, make us want to look at it a little bit more closely. So my challenge with the kids that I, I do it in class is always when everything, everything that you make is going to be more than one color. Okay, so use more than one color today. All right, we're using crayons, crayons of all different colors. You may use, be using something else as well. Be, be free and play with any colors you want to. So we're going to just play with color as we create our landscape. Okay. So we're going to use, I'm using black paper today, all right, black paper. Now here's my landscape. We decided it was kind of winter when we started this to do kind of a winter landscape. So if you notice, the land has snow, right? There's snow, there's a nice little pond, nice sunset. And if you look, again, everything is not just one color. Look at the sunset. You see beautiful oranges, reds, yellows that even move up into the sky and reflect on the clouds. They're not just white. You see beautiful reflections of color there. The snow, is the snow just white? No, I see those same colors 
blues and yellows and purples and reds, the pond as well, all those reflections as well. It makes it much more interesting to look at, doesn't it? Instead of just stark one color for each item. Okay, so that's the challenge today. We're going to use more than one color. Okay, now we're going to start out with, all right, I'm going to give you a little bit of direction in the beginning. That's what I usually do with my kids. We start with the foreground. Okay, now what's about, what's up with this tree? Why is this tree so large? And they are, they're, they say it's in the foreground. It starts at the bottom and moves all the way up to the top almost, right? So the tree is very large because it's the closest thing to us. This little cabin in the background is higher up on the plane. So as everything moves back in space, it generally moves up higher, okay? We have a nice line here that tells us the di difference between the land and the sky. Very important in a landscape drawing, okay? And the cabin is much smaller than our tree because it's further away, okay? So that's kind of going to be our challenge today. Especially if we have some kindergartners and first graders. Hi guys, I miss you all. I miss you all so much. Um, I'm glad you could be with us today. But we're going to have some fun. All right. So we're going to get started. All right. Now, like I said, I don't like to just think of things as one color. The first thing we're going to start with is the foreground. Okay. We're going to make a couple big trees. Okay. A couple large trees and what I usually do when I'm teaching is I just put my hand in the color crayons and I pick one out. All right, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to kind of move my hand around, pick out a color. What color do I have? I have a nice orange. That's interesting. That could be interesting. So I'm going to start my trees. I'm going to do two big trees in the foreground. And remember, they're going to be the largest thing because they're in the front, right? They're going to be in the front. We're going to start we're going to do them kind of at the side. Why would I just do them at the side? Well, because we want to do a lot of fun stuff in the background. It's going to give us room to create some things in the background. So my foreground of the trees, they're going to start at the bottom. All right. And I might actually go almost all the way to the top. Okay. Can you guys see that? Okay. And then I'm going to make another one a little bit shorter just to make it a little bit more interesting. Okay. I'm going to bring this in a little bit so you guys can see. All right, so a little wobbly there because it's everything's backwards for me. So two lines. These are going to be my trees in the foreground, okay? Trees in the foreground. We're just going to do simple evergreen trees, kind of like a Christmas tree. Smaller at the top, larger lines at the bottom. So if you want to follow with me, you can. Okay, so I'm going to use the same color. I'm going to start at the top, and I'm just going to create lines all the way down. These are simple lines. They're going to get larger as I move down towards the bottom. Okay, now this is just telling me how big my trees are, where my trees are, okay? So these aren't gonna stay like this. We're not gonna have little Charlie Brown trees going on here. We're gonna add more to it. But now I know where my trees are, how big they are, right? Okay, so I'm gonna add some more color. I'm gonna just keep using this orange to kind of fill them in little bit more and they can come crisscross over each other as well because everything in nature if you're in a forest all the trees they all kind of overlap overlap meaning one thing is going to grow the other right okay so the trees are kind of overlapping in space all right so now remember i'm not just going to use one color i'm going to grab green now and kind of add some more green to it now maybe I have a beautiful sunset in the background and all those colors are reflecting on my tree, okay? Okay. Now I'm gonna give you a little time to do this, all right? I'm gonna take a little, take it a little bit slower, okay? So if you're working with me or if you're just watching, especially if you're working with me, two lines, now I know where my trees are. Very simple, smaller lines moving into larger, longer lines towards the bottom. Okay, if you want to add even another color, you can. I think I'm going to do that just while I'm waiting for you guys to catch up. How's that? So I'm going to throw another color in. Ooh, I might use some yellow. Okay, now remember, we're using crayons. Our challenge today is everything you make, everything you make. 
you're going to use more than one color. So now, at this point, I'm thinking I am going to have an awesome sunset in the background that's just kind of reflecting onto the trees. Okay, I'm going to bring this in for you a little bit again so you guys can see my guy. Now it's kind of backward. I'm kind of getting a, trying to get a right angle here. <laughs> All right, so very simple. Very simple trees. Okay, now I'm going to give to the trick with these crayons. The harder you press, the brighter they get. Okay, same thing with crayons basically and oil pastels, chalk pastels. The harder you press, the more bright your colors are. Okay, so that's another challenge. Okay, so now we've got our trees in the foreground. What a landscape artist does before they do anything, is they look. They look very closely. They look around them. Okay, If you're doing a seascape like we, I showed you earlier, you, know, you look. Generally, the first place they look is where the line, the horizon line, where the sky meets the land. So the line where the sky meets the land is your horizon line. Now this is a real trick to learn to teach the kindergartners and sometimes the first graders. So what I tell them to do is a lot of times before we even do the trees, a landscape artist is going to draw that horizon line. It doesn't have to be a straight line. Why? Because the land is not perfectly straight or flat. All right, so I'm just going to come up a little bit maybe above halfway and just make a nice line that goes all the way across. All right, so the cool thing about it, this is you guys don't have to worry about perfection, right? Every tree is different. Never, no two trees are alike. The landscape is going to be different. It's never going to be a perfect straight line, okay? There might be even some mountains in the background, okay? So this is where the sky and the ground meet each other, okay? So when I add color, my sky, this whole area is going to be filled with color, maybe blue. I'll probably add some more colors as well, right? This might be green. If there's a lot of green grass, the whole thing is going to be green all the way up to my line. Or I might have some water in here where that goes up towards the, the top as well. Okay, so the sky and the land meet. So go outside and check it out. Look at the landscape. Notice how the sky touches either the top of the buildings or the land or the bushes or the trees. Okay. So I'm going to show you a few more here. I really like this one. This one actually does have mountains. Okay. So I really love this one. Now, where's my horizon line? I personally would probably pick it right here. Okay. There's your horizon line. It's getting a little bit ahead of it than I where I'm at here. <laughs> now, the foreground. Notice what's in the foreground. These gorgeous bushes, they're so huge. They almost look as big as the mountains. Why? Why are they so big? Because they're in the front. They're in the foreground. Why are the mountains so small? Because they're far, far away. But they look very similar in size. But the bushes are in the front. The mountains are in behind. It's even. They're even above our horizon line. Okay, so they almost become, they become now where the sky and the land meets, right? Okay, now look at the sky. Is the sky just blue? No, there's beautiful oranges and yellows. Are the clouds just white? No. I see some beautiful oranges and yellows. Look at those bushes. Those bushes are so beautiful. They're not just green. I see yellows and greens, some turquoises. I even see some beautiful purples in there. And right on the edge, I see a little trace of orange. Maybe that's the sunrise reflecting on our lovely bushes. Now look at the water. Is the water just blue? No, they threw in a little purple there, a little turquoise. Why? Because it makes it more interesting. Look at my mountains. Look at these mountains. That one in the middle, brown and purple. The two behind, blue and purple little, uh, with a little bit of... Uh, snow on top, but they're different. They're not just one color. That makes them much more interesting, right? So everything you make today, everything you make, try to use more than one color, okay? All right, so we're going to move on. So now we have our horizon line, 
Okay, so we've got a great horizon line going. Now, what are we going to put in between? What are we going to put in the sky? We're going to start with the sky. So since we're using crayons, a lot of times if you're painting, you would do this the opposite way. But we're going to start with what we're going to put in the sky. You can put in the sun. You can put the moon in. You could put stars, clouds, right, birds, anything that you want. We're going to start with, I think I'm going to do a sunset because I love that color that's kind of reflecting on my trees. So we're going to do a sunset. You can do whatever you want. You can do the sun. You can do the moon. Now, even if you do the moon, is the moon just going to be white? No, add some color. Make it interesting. Make it fun. Okay, so I'm going to start with boring old yellow for my sun. Okay, I'm just going to put that right in between here. Kind of to make it counterbalance to my trees. Okay, so I'm going to have my sun setting. Sun setting. Now, normally the sun would probably be smaller than this, but I just really want to emphasize the sun here. Because I think it's the sunset is so beautiful. Not really seeing it today because we have the rain out there, but I'm not going to make this whole thing yellow. I'm going to maybe press it a little bit harder in places where I want it to be a little brighter. Then I'm going to add some other colors. I might add some orange. I might add some reds and some different various reds or oranges as well. So I'm going to throw in a little red here and a little orange as well. Okay. So I'm kind of kind of mixing them. Kind of making my sun look a little bit more interesting, right? Now let's come back in and see that. Okay, sun's a little bit more interesting. It's not just yellow. So everything you make today, your challenge is add more than one color. Now I'm gonna have my sun kind of uh moving into the sky with the color, but I'm going to kind of put in a little bit of blue first, okay? So what I'm going to do is, I'm just not going to make it real solid, so I'm just going to kind of move in with some color. So I'm going to be a little bit freer today, guys, because we don't have a lot of time. So I'm going to be a little bit more, less worried about perfection, which sometimes is kind of nice. Sometimes these things that that are more spontaneous are really not a lot nicer than things that are, you know, you kind of struggle to perfect, right? And with kids, I love working with kids because they're so spontaneous, they're willing to do anything, and I learn just as much from them as I do adults, okay? So again, I steal a lot from kids. All right, so got a little bit of blue here. I'm gonna move this in for you so you can see that again, a little bit of blue. Now I'm going to throw some of that color into the sky, all right? Now I'm going to start with maybe some yellow, okay? Some yellow, and I'm going to maybe bring it out in the same direction, kind of in a circular direction. A lot of times I tell kids, if you want something to look like it has depth or form, color in the same direction. Now, I'm not going to blend these because crayons are fairly hard to blend. But if you're using pastels, you can kind of blend with your finger. You can blend with uh, some type of uh, Kleenex or paper towel. I'm going to bring some orange here. Okay. So I love sunsets. They're like one of my favorite things ever. I'm going to throw some orange in here as well. And now I'm going to try to find the darkest red I can. Now these colors are really nice and bright. I'm going to throw some red in here as well. So I'm just kind of, kind of overlapping my colors as I throw them into the sky. Okay. Awesome. And I'm going to kind of move my red maybe out a little bit more into my sky just to kind of make it look like they're kind of blending together. Okay, now what else do I want in my sky? Maybe, maybe I'll throw a few clouds in there. Okay, so I'm going to start with white. But remember the clouds that we saw earlier? Were they, were they just white? No, they weren't. Now, I'm going to give you just a little time to catch up here. I want you to add a lot of beautiful color, all right? 
So while you're doing that, I'm going to talk about it a little bit. So as I did my sunset, I didn't use just yellow, did I? Nope, I added some reds and some oranges. Out here on the outside, I've got my blue background. I colored in some yellow. Then I went over with some orange. And I moved out even further with some red, right? Now, if you're doing the moon, and then sometimes my favorite thing in the whole wide world is when you can see the sun and the moon and the sky at the same time. That way, if you want to do a moon and not the sun, you can do a moon together. So I'm just kind of lightly adding some white in here, okay? So if you look at the moon, you've got reflections in there too, like the clouds. Sometimes the haze of the clouds will add a reflection into the sun or into the moon. If you've got the sun on the other side of the, or the earth, it, those reflections move into the, over to the moon as well got the man in the moon. So I left a little dark in here, a little, uh, I didn't color it solid per se, okay, to give it a little bit of texture, a little bit of interest, and if you want, you can even add some color. I think I'm going to throw a little of the blue in here and maybe highlight it just a little. boring old white moon, do I? Okay. That's the thing I really love about these uh, construction paper crayons. They have a really smooth texture. Again, they feel like, almost like a cross between a crayon and a colored pencil. Okay, So it's really fun to play with them, and I had never used them before. So I'm kind of a beginner at this as well. Okay, Now, what do we want to do with our land? While I'm thinking about that, if, you want to, if you're doing your moon or if you're finishing anything up here, go ahead and do that. But I think I'm going to add maybe a cloud or two up here as well. Okay, So I'm going to throw a cloud in right here. And that cloud is coming in. And again, I'll have to give you a little close-up shot here in a minute. But is my cloud going to be just white? No. And the reason why I like doing this cloud last is because you see some of those colors kind of picking up in the white as well. Okay, so everything you make, I can use more than one color, right? I can even maybe have a little bit of a cloud moving across my moon if I want. Okay. And then if you want to add a little bit more color to those, you can, or you can just let the color from the background kind of pull white. It's a little bit transparent, so that's nice. Okay. All right. Now, what do we want to do here? Now, this is the, where the part of the lesson that I really love, because what I usually do is I let the kids go off on their own. After we do the trees in the foreground and we do the horizon line, I let them pick whatever they want to do in the background. I've seen some amazing things. I've seen some beautiful suns, moons, clouds. Some kids like to put like rockets in the sky. I've seen kids put birds in the sky, different different things like that. So I've seen some really cool and interesting things. And then I kind of let them kind of go on their own, do anything they want here. So it's in the wilderness, right? What are you going to put in the wilderness? Okay. Well, you could do maybe, I'm going to show you in the other one of these guys. You could do a little cabin in the woods, which I know Miss Elizabeth loves. Okay, I've got a little pond on this one. There's snow on the ground. I've got the trees in the background. I've seen some kids do some pretty awesome stuff. Instead of a cabin, I've seen them do a cave with a campfire inside. I've seen them do uh, tents Okay, and other types of buildings besides a cabin. You don't even have to have a building. I had couple kids, I thought this is really interesting because I didn't prompt it at all. I had a, a couple kids do a barn and animals are in the barn or coming out of the barn and a cornfield, which I thought was really interesting for a landscape. I didn't really even talk about it. They just did that on their own. I thought that was really cool. So you can also add animals. I've seen really cool animals. Um, I've seen wolves, uh, deer, 
the bees and bunny rabbits, foxes. Elizabeth's favorite animal is the fox. So what are we going to do here? What are we going to put here? It's your choice. I want really, if you want, if you're really working along with me, I want you to really have fun with this now. I want you to kind of go on your own, figure out what you want to put in. All right, because guys, it doesn't have to be perfect. Everybody has their own style. And I see that style coming through with kids who are in kindergarten all the way up through adulthood. Most, most people have kind of their own style or the way that, of doing things. And the more that they do it, the more it becomes their own. So don't worry about how you do this. Do I want yours to look exactly like mine? No. Do you want yours to look exactly like your neighbor, maybe your brother or sister? No. This is your creation. So have fun with it. Have fun with the color. All right. So I'm not really sure what I want to do yet because on the, I did the cabin in the woods. So I want a little, do something a little bit different, but I really do. I got to tell you, this one is my favorite. I love the mountain scene. It's gorgeous. Okay. I also really like this one. I'm not sure. If, I think Sarah did this. It's almost, it has a very abstract quality to it. I love the waterfall. It's so cool. The trees. I love how she did the sun. It's very beautiful. It's got a really nice kind of almost abstract quality as well to it. And kids, when you're when kids are doing artwork, the abstraction sometimes is pretty pretty cool. So, let it be abstract. Abstract is something that doesn't look real. It kind of looks real sometimes. Sometimes it doesn't look like anything at all. So, have fun creating. You can even create fantastic animals, animals that aren't even real. You could do uh, different buildings that might be fantastic. I, like I said, I've seen kids do uh, different things in the sky, like rockets. I've had kids, some kids even do like moonscapes or planetscapes. Those were really, really cool as well. So, all right, let's see. How are we doing on time? Okay, good, good. I'm just checking. Okay, so. We've got the sky. This is what I've added. If you want to add anything else, go for it. If you want to do something different with your trees, go for it. I think what I want to do is maybe right in here add like a stream of water. I don't know why, because usually I do a pond. But for some reason, kind of a stream or a river is kind of uh, speaking to me. So I'm just going to add, just press a little bit harder than normal. Kind of shows through, and I'm not worried about going right across because you're going to see that river maybe in the background, so it's going to kind of show through as well. So I'm not sure. I'm kind of going a little bit. I'm just going almost straight across. And this is not what I do. I don't do like a big pond or anything. So I'm going to do something a little different. Okay. All right. So, and then I might want to fill it in. So that's my blue. I'm not going to fill it in completely though. Why? Because, challenge, everything you make, try to use more than one color, all right? Okay, so I'm going to fill it in just a little bit. Then I might add a different blue, okay? Let's see what other blue can I use. I really like this kind of purpley blue here. You might not see it quite as well because it's pretty dark, but I'm going to add a little bit of that. And again, I'll throw in a close-up here in a sec. Okay. And then later, I might add a little bit more of my branches just to kind of go on top of this, overlaps here a little bit more. But I'm not really worried about that. I'm still feeling like it looks like it's behind. Okay. But then I might even want to maybe add a little bit of white here and there just to kind of give it the idea that there's some light reflecting on my river, right? Now, if anybody is doing this with me and you want to do something else, I definitely want you to do that. Because remember, this is the part where I let everybody kind of go off on their own. Because I like, I love to see the creative, creativity come out of kids. It just really is wonderful. And they have so much more fun when they can kind of be creative and it happens to be exactly what I'm doing, right? And again, I don't want yours to look exactly like mine. You want yours to have your own style. Okay, so I'm adding a little bit of white here and there. Now the sun is setting, so maybe I'll throw in some colors 
of the sunset, right? some of your edges a little bit. Now, I don't always do the full line. I just kind of pick and choose spots here and there to kind of give you the idea that there's uh, some uh, reflection going on there. I'm making a mess of these creases. Okay. I'm going to bring you. Look at this yellow. Yellow. Now, this almost looks like a Jackson Pollock painting. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to come bit closer so you can see. I can get a good angle on here. Can you see that okay? Okay. All right. So I, is it all just one color? No, especially since the sunset is reflecting on my water, right? All right. Now, what do I want to do with the rest of this? Gosh, I don't know. I'm definitely going to put some greenery in here, I think. I might add some green. So I'm going to pick a couple different colors of green and maybe even some blue. I don't have a huge wide variety, but I'm going to work with what I have. And again, remember, not, you don't want everything to be the same color, right? All right, now, this is where I have a hard time explaining to, especially like kindergartners and first graders. So if you're out there, think about this. A lot of times... When you're doing the sky, I see only like blues, a strip of blue all the way across the top. And then if they're doing the land, like maybe green, I just see a little strip of green across the bottom. And the sky and the land, there's really nothing in between, right? So you want your sky and your land to meet. So I'm going to come up here first. I'm going to show you that I'm going to make this like some little grass strip. Okay, now I am not going to make this just green. You see why? Well, guess what? The light from that sunset is going to reflect on the land as well, kind of like it did on the snow. You know, it's very reflective, but you can still, you'll still see some of those reflections on the land as well. Especially when it's really, you're really in a kind of a peak of awesome sunset. Is this kind of moving on me? Okay, there we go. So I'm going to throw in some other colors here as well. So now you see that my land and my sky are meeting, right? Let me show you this. She's so awesome. She's helping me out today, guys, because I've never done this before. So everybody has to do it the first time, right? So if you've never done this before, we're all kind of all doing this together. Now just for some interest, I might even throw a little purple in here just to have some fun. Because I really love a little purple to kind of give those kind of lines in each color. Very pretty. Thank you. All right. Now I have my sunset here. I might throw a little bit of orange in the grass too, right? I like the grass really wide. I love that color. Okay. Okay. Now I don't want to lose totally lose my line here, so I might kind of come in and leave me a little bit of my horizon line. And why is it orange? Because I want it to be orange, I don't really care. But I think it looks really pretty against the green. I like the contrast of the warm orange, warm colors, right? Orange, yellow, red are really beautiful against cool colors, the blues and the greens and the purples. They, they balance each other really nicely. They make each other pop really well. And plus, the sun is setting, so I might have that in real life if I look at the sunset. You might see a little bit of that orange on the edge of the horizon. Okay. Now, what am I going to do down here? I don't know. I like the grass. I'm probably going to add a little bit more grass. But what else could I add? Seems like maybe it's some kind of animal. What could be out this way? You know what I've been seeing a lot lately in my yard? I've been seeing a lot of rabbits. 
lot of rabbits in my yard. Okay, now if you want to do something else, feel free. You can do your dog, you can do your cat, you can do wolf, coyote, you can do a fox, any kind of wilderness animal. I think I'm going to do a few little bunny rabbits just because I've seen a lot in my yard lately and actually they've been kind of eating some of my plants, which I'm not real happy about, but I still love them. I love bunny rabbits, especially baby bunnies. All right, so I'm going to start with white only because this is so dark. I really want my bunnies to kind of show. I'm going to do a very simple bunny. Remember, this does not have to be perfect, okay? So your animal might be different looking than my animal, and that's okay because you have your own style, right? I have my own style. And as you grow and the more you work, the more your style is going to come out. Okay? You never want that to change. So I always tell kids, you can make just about anything if you think about the shapes. Okay? So think about a bunny rabbit. I have to think about the shape of maybe the head. Body, right? Those are probably the two main shapes that I want. What shape might my might the head be? Now I'm going to make him closer to the ground. That way he'll be bigger. He'll be in the foreground. Things that are closer or larger, right? So I'm going to make my bunny maybe down here. Okay. What shape will I make his head? I think a, a good oval might be nice. Okay. And then the body is like an oval as well, I believe. Okay. And then I'll add legs as well, but for now I'm just going to kind of concentrate on the body. What else is going to make me know that this is a rabbit? Obviously the ears, right? The ears are going to pop out. Ears here. All right. Okay. And then the legs, is he running or is he just sitting? I think he's going to just be sitting. So I'm going to do another oval right here, another oval for the foot. Okay. So he's kind of sitting might be nibbling on some of my plants, right? Okay. All right. I'm going to add a little pink inside the ear over here. I'm going to go ahead and do both of them. A little pink on the nose. Okay. All right. I'm going to add a little pink in the throat here. Okay. Sorry, I'm kind of holding this up because he's wanting to move on me. Okay. All right, I'm going to make a maybe a, a, a suggestion of an eye. So I always tell people if they don't want, if things aren't, aren't just going to look totally real, suggest it. I'm suggesting a leg. This isn't a very realistic leg here. All right, it's not a realistic, very realistic bunny either. But it looks like a bunny, so I'm going to move it in and let you see this bunny a little bit closer. If I can get the right angle again. Okay. All right, so we have a bunny. We have the grass up at the top. We're going to add some grass down here, but I'm thinking maybe a baby bunny. What do you think? So if you're doing a coyote or a fox, this is the time of the year, right? And you're going to see a lot of babies. So I'm going to add maybe some tiny animals here. A little oval for the head, a little oval for the body. I'm just thinking about shape. Okay, this is my bunny. I'm also I'm just thinking from all the letters in there. That's that's what they do. They do. So we just stuff those down there. That's the moms. You guys grow so fast. I always tell my grandkids to stop growing, but that's just the way it is. And I'll stop on it. A little pink nose, maybe. Now, once I have the things that I want, I'll go in and do the, the background of, like, the, the earth or, or the grass or whatever. You might want to do some kind of a building here, right? Like the cabin. I love the cabins. I saw some really awesome tents and campfires. Um, really, really cool, interesting, creative things. So you be as creative, creative as you want to be, all right? So I'm going to go in. And maybe throw in some greens again. I'm going to use this bright green. I think we can use this pinkish color as well. So I'm going to come in. This time I'm kind of using the side of my crayon instead of the pointed part. Because I want to kind of make sure I don't...
I'm not making it real solid. So I'm going to add some other colors. What's our challenge today? Everything you make is going to need more than one color. Okay? Put a little green in there. I'm going to put a little bit of this blue in. Kind of echo, kind of repeat the blue of the water and some of the blue in the sky. Sometimes when you repeat colors and shapes in a drawing or painting or any kind of 2D thing you're making, it helps it kind of all come together if you repeat colors here and there. Okay, so I'm adding a little bit of that blue. I might throw in, well, it's just along the bottom. I don't know why I want to do this. I just do. I feel like I want to add just a little bit of the orange down here. Almost like we're getting, still getting some of that reflection coming down here, kind of like it's coming off the trees. But it's also kind of coming down as well. I might come in and re-highlight some of my water area. Okay. All right. Remember, the more you press, the brighter your colors get. But our true test for testing out these um, construction paper crayons was using black. All right, so it's going to be a little bit more muted as as opposed to if you're using white paper. These colors will really pop and pop out real quick. Okay, I really like that kind of muted tones that you get in here, especially for the sunset. And again, I am going to go back to this one. I just love it. Love the colors of this one. I love how the colors of the mountains aren't the same. I love, love, love the bushes. Okay. And I know I like the repetition. Remember the repetition of colors and shapes help a piece come together and be balanced. The the size and the shape of the bushes kind of against the side and the shape of size and the shape of the mountains. Give a nice added repetition. All right, the orange and yellows in the sky are kind of hitting the tops of the, the bushes. Okay, and so you're seeing different colors kind of repeated throughout the entire piece, and that just kind of helps things to kind of come together. And that's another reason why a lot of times artists add more than one color to different things is so they can balance the colors out in the picture that they're making. Plus, they look a lot more interesting, don't they? I think if these bushes were just green, it would be kind of boring. But all the beautiful colors that the artist is using here just, I, just really makes it really, really gorgeous. Okay? Okay, so I'm going to let you kind of catch up a little bit. All right? How are we doing on time? Okay, we're doing pretty well. So, if you're working on your land, Okay, you can be adding things. You can be adding animals. You can add buildings. Like, again, I love the cabins. I love the cabin theme, especially in the wilderness, right? Another cabin. Now, this cabin's a little larger because it's closer to the front. The cabin that you just saw was further in the background, so it's going to be smaller, right? Everything that gets further and further away get smaller and smaller and smaller. I like this night scene. I really like the moon here. And they added the stars. Now, is the moon just white? No. I see some lovely yellows. Look at the sky, even though it's night. Even though it's dark out. The artists actually added colors to the sky. Why? Well, it makes it so much more interesting. And it still looks like night. Stars. I like the stars, the touch of the stars. But did you know that stars are different colors too? Every star is a different color. You'll see reds, yellows, whites, blues, greens. Why? Because every star is a different temperature. So whatever the temperature that star is, is going to dictate what color it is. So you can even be colorful with your stars. So how are we doing, everybody? All right, now I'm going to kind of maybe pull some more highlights into some of my things, like my tree here, my two trees. Once I got everything in there, 
kind of lost him just a little bit. And even though, since they're in the front, in the foreground, I really kind of probably, they should probably be popping this a little bit more. So I'm gonna grab some of my yellow and my bright green. I'm gonna come in and add some more of that, okay? And they're overlapping, that's okay, right? I'm just gonna add a little bit more to these just so they kind of further things go back, the lighter they become, the less detail you see, so all the great details start to fade. So you're going to see less detail in the background, more detail in the front, okay? That's all about space. It's what space does, okay? So this is my picture. How are you doing with your picture? Okay. Are you still with me? Are you still with me? So, I think I'm pretty much done with mine, but I'm going to let you finish up yours. Now, we're going to be done here in just a few minutes, but that doesn't mean you have to be done with yours. It doesn't mean I have to be done with mine. I might come back to this in a couple days or even a couple weeks, add more things, think about some different colors. Sometimes a lot of artists will walk away from something for a little while. And then they'll come back to it later with fresh eyes and look at things and add things that might make them really like it even more or make it a more interesting piece. A lot of times we have things in our heads that we want to, something to look like. And if we don't like how it ends, if you walk away from it, come back to it later, even a month later. I've even come back to artwork years later and I'm like, why did I not like that? I really like that piece. Sometimes we're our own worst critics. And again, when we're, when we're youngsters, sometimes we're even our even worst critics. We really are hard on ourselves. But remember, everybody has their own style. Everybody has their own way of doing things. And you learn the basics. You learn how to do different techniques. But a true artist takes those techniques and they make them their own kind of do the things that maybe somebody else might have not have thought of before. And that's, again, why I love working with kids, because I've learned just as much from kids as I hope that they've learned from me. In fact, I've come across a few kids once in a while, and they're like, how did you do that? <laughs> and they show me, I'm like, I'm stealing it. It's mine now. <laughs> but I'll give you credit, right? So that's what great artists do, too. They, they, they draw from each other. They make it their own, okay, because we all don't live in a vacuum. We all kind of live together. Hopefully, we'll be living together a little bit more soon, but right now is a perfect time for artists, perfect time for artists. Artists really love to work on their own. This is a perfect time to have, find that time to do that, and youngsters, if you're feeling bored, that's the word I get from my grandkids a lot. I'm like, nope, nope, that's not a word I want you guys using. Do some type of artwork. Artwork is the best way to keep yourself from not getting bored, okay? Lots of reading as well. Read, read, read. Really enjoy the books that you have. Okay? Even if you find some things online, they will take you to a whole other world, even though you're stuck in your bedroom or in your living room. Books and art will take you to a whole other place, not just in your mind, but in your heart, okay? And I want to tell you guys, I really miss you a lot. I can't wait. I can't really wait to see you again. Miss Vicki is just missing her students so much, all right? So hopefully soon we'll be able to get together in real life. If not, maybe in a few months, if we still can't uh, get together, we can do this again online, okay? Maybe I can meet up with you guys again, because I really miss you guys a lot. I, I kind of hope you miss me, too. All right? Okay, so it's about time for me to sign off. All right? I really loved having you guys come visit me today. I hope we can do this again soon. All right? So, 
Miss Vicki is going to say goodbye to you guys. Share your artwork. Tag the Quincy Art Center moms and dads, the grandmas and grandpas. Spread the love. Everybody will love to see your kids' artwork. I love looking at kids' artwork online. That's one of my favorite, favorite things. I get very inspired by children's artwork. Okay, So don't be afraid to throw it out there. Don't be afraid to let them know where they learned it as well. <laughs> and hopefully we'll see you guys again soon. Okay?